Coming up on today's Unscripted Faith, PA Family Institute's Robert Albino is using his life story to reach the Hispanic community for Christ. You're also going to hear of his incredible story of how he's making his life count by being a voice for the voiceless. Yes, and the countdown is on. We are just days away from the elections. Is your decision made? Mm. We'll be joined by Pastor Dave DiDonato, who is going to challenge us with the believer's approach to voting. That's what's coming up on Unscripted Faith as it starts right now. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You know, we are a week from now, Angela. We will most likely, everything yes. pans out well, we yes. will have a new president yes. in office. Yeah, it's getting real in here. It is getting it's real. Getting very real. <laughs> you know, you got, you got your mind made up which way you're going? Yeah, I think I do, Pastor Jay. Okay, all right, <laughs> sounds good. Well, our first guest is alive today all because of the power of prayer. Robert, we are so glad to have you with us here on Unscripted Faith. How you doing, brother? I'm doing well, Jay. Thank you for having me. It's great to be here. Man, it's so good to see you again. My Puerto Rican brother from another mother. <laughs> Man, it's so good to be with you again. I tell you what, this is going to be a great interview and a time together. And uh, let's just jump right into this here. Uh, tell us about uh, obviously, the election is here. It's coming up. Or, uh, like I said, a week from now, we're going to have a new president in office. Pro-life is definitely on the ballot. But you have a story of how your grandmother's prayers brought you into this planet. Yeah, and, you know, it's all for the glory of God. My mother was uh, 15 years old when she became pregnant, um, and my, fa my family was very poor. And so the idea of, um, you know, having a, a, another child was something that they, they weren't really um, leaning towards. And my grandfather wasn't a believer, um, and he, he just wanted to get, you know, be, be done with the issue. So we wanted my mom to, to abort uh, me, and uh, my grandmother began to pray. Uh, she was opposed to it. Um, it it wasn't part of, of my family's, you know, sort of cultural DNA. Um, so my grandmother began to pray. And her entire life, until she passed uh, a few years back, uh, she was a prayer warrior. And she prayed that God would soften my grandfather's heart and that, uh, that she would be able to have the wisdom uh, to make a proposal that, that would work and, and that he would be okay with. So after, after a lot of prayer, she, she said, if I need to raise this child as my own, as we raise them as he's our son so that, um, you know, so that, you know, our daughter can continue and, and graduate from high school and, and she can have the support that she needs. Uh, that's what we'll do. But we're not going to we're not going to abort this child. So it took a lot of prayer, but it also took courage. And uh, in the end, I'm here. So I, obviously we know how the story ended. Um, and I think I'm, I'm very thankful for, for my grandmother. And she instilled that, that, uh, that desire and that passion for prayer in, into me as well. And so I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm blessed to, to be uh, the product of that type of a, of a story. Well, you know, prayer truly has been foundational for you coming into this earth, and I'm sure it is still very foundational in what you're doing now. Can you explain to us or express to us what role prayer plays in your current role? Uh, prayer is everything. Um, you know, we, we're in a space that the battle might be cultural and it might be based on ideas, but we understand that uh, above all of that, it's it's a it's a battle between um, spiritual principalities, and I'm one that believes that as believers, we're the only people on earth who have the weapons and have the tools to fight that type of battle. You cannot fight a secular. You cannot fight a spiritual battle with secular methods, and the Bible gives us uh, authority and it gives us these spiritual weapons by which we should be engaging in this battle. So prayer um, is, the, is the catalyst. Prayer is uh, the, the platform uh, by which you can 
obtain all of those spiritual weapons to continue in this in this fight in the spirit that we have for our culture, for our children, uh, for life. You know, the, the battle for life is the spiritual one. The battle for uh, for truth is the spiritual one. So um, we we understand that if if we stick to prayer, you know, God will sort everything else out and we'll see victory. You know, Robert, six days away from the election, we're seeing a lot of stuff happening. Things are ramping up. Uh, why is it important in your estimation that uh, people vote biblical values? You know, uh, Pastor Jay, that's a great question. We, we have been traveling the state, and in my case, I, I've, I've gone to several even battleground states talking about this very topic with uh, Hispanic pastors, um, and I believe the uh, the idea that must be embraced by Christians is is not that we need to be separate from the government uh, process and from the political process because of you know what the Constitution says in terms of the separation of church and state. The idea is is that God established government. It is an institute established by God. Romans 13. And there are five institutions that, as believers, biblically, we recognize have been established by God. Marriage, family, ministry, the church, and government. The other four, any believer that you ask, any pastor that you ask, they would agree that it is the job of the church and the job of believers to steward those institutions. That's why we fight for life. That's why we fight for family values. That's why we fight for biblical marriage and biblical sexuality, etc., that's why we're so protective of ministry and so protective of the integrity of orthodoxy in the church. But when it comes to government, it, there's like a there's like a schism ideologically where the, the church shouldn't be engaged. Well, if it's established and instituted by God, it's up to us to steward it well. And when we detach ourselves from that process, we let the world then enter in and be the stewards of it. That's why we see politics and we see government run the way it is. And so that's that's at the premise, that's at the foundation of the engagement that the church must have. And one of the easiest ways, one of the most foundational ways we can get engaged is by voting. And you can't go to the polls and, and vote uh, based on what you heard on the news media, based on what you heard on TikTok or Facebook. You need to go uh, very well saturated by the Word of God, ask the Holy Spirit to lead you and guide you so that you can express your faith in your vote, express your faith in your vote and your stance on the Bible, on the Word of God in your vote. Robert, real quickly, you know, there's a lot of people that may need to get educated on what each person believes. I know at one point, PA Family used to have uh, voters guides that give you the sides of uh, people that are running. Do you guys still have that? Is that available still now? Because that's important that not only people need to pray, I think they need to get educated on what their policies and what their values are. Do you guys still have that open? 100%, uh, it's still available, PA Family Voter, uh, PA Family Voter. Uh, org. You can go there. Um, you will find you put your address in and it'll give you every candidate that's going to be on your ballot when you go into your voting booth and and where they stand on the issues of, you know, uh, uh, the issue of, of abortion, the issue uh, of immigration, the issue of the economy, et cetera. All of these issues that are very important to believers. Uh, so we definitely do have that resource available right now. It's amazing. I'm thankful that there are organizations who step up to help us because it's a lot to sift it through. Is. It is a lot. And um, thankful for your voice. You know, one more question about kind of your testimony and your story of being here. How is the relationship with your mother and with your grandmother today? Uh, well, my, my grandmother passed a few years back. Um, he, she's with the Lord, and, and we're just so grateful for the legacy she left our family. Um, and to, but just to shed a little bit of light on the relationship that her and I had, um, she put me in her will as one of her children. And so um, I, nothing that I do in ministry, I, I would be doing if not for my grandmother. She's the one uh, who bought me my first keyboard. Uh, she's the one who advocated for me to, to uh, be a musician in the church and a worshiper at church from the, from the age of you know, nine, 10 years old. 
So uh, her her uh, her influence and her impact on my life, uh, I think, is just going to carry me all the way uh, to to the Lord returns. Uh, my mother and I uh, we have a great relationship. She lives out of state now with my brother, but um, she she she's a, a woman of God, a woman of prayer. Uh, operates a, a missions ministry in the Dominican Republic as well. And so, um, you know, we, we're, we're still very close. And, and, uh, and I just thank the Lord that um, I'm able to use my voice and my story um, to speak on this issue, uh, especially during a time like this. You know, Rob, we didn't get a chance to get in on it, but uh, maybe next time we have you back, we'll be able to talk more about that. But you're a phenomenal worship leader. I've experienced you personally. Uh, we thank God for what you do musically. We thank God for your stance for life, what you're doing for PA Family Institute. Thank you so much for all that you're doing. And uh, come back to Unscripted Faith anytime. I love it, man. Thank you so much for having me. You guys are rock stars. God bless you. Uh, his favor be upon you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Well, we're about to check out a special Ask Amy edition as she tackles a difficult task of trying to balance friendship and politics. Let's take a look. Have you ever heard the phrase that there is an elephant in the room? If you say there's an elephant in the room, what you mean is there is an obvious problem or a difficult situation that people do not want to talk about. There is an elephant in the room. And in this politically bruising season that we're in, many people are asking this next question. Today the question is, my friend is liberal and I'm conservative. How do I handle this? <laughs> As my dog sighs, here are my three thoughts. Do not let the government divide you. Do not, we are one nation under God. Do not let the government move in between your friends and your family to separate you. Number two, your friendship is not based solely alone on politics. You have so much more that unites you. Look at all that you have in common. Your former friends, your schools, the sports, the city, your family, there is so much to unite on. Proverbs 17 says this, friends love through all kinds of weather and families stick together in all kinds of trouble. Wow, what about John 3:16? For God so greatly loved and dearly prized the world that he sent his only son. So if that's the way God feels about the world, about all people, how should we feel about all people? And Psalm 133 is my favorite. Behold how good and pleasant it is when brethren, when brothers and sisters, friends, get along and dwell together in unity. Come on, we gotta stick together in this thing. Ultimately, your friendship should not be about the elephant or the donkey. It should be about the lion and the lamb. Make sure you keep a loving heart towards people. We are all the human race and we are all God's children. And there is a lot more that unites us than divides us. So that's Ask Amy. Make sure and send in your questions and I'll see you next week. Well, thank you, Pastor Amy, for that wisdom. You know, guys, I feel like it is so important if we as believers can't get along and be the peacemakers we're called to, we're in trouble. <laughs> yeah, without a doubt. Without what do you a doubt. think? Yeah, we, we just kicked off seven days of prayer. My first subject today was pray for peace, to be agents of peace in this time. And yes. I think as believers, you know, Paul said, speak truth and love. We're really good in this moment of speaking truth, but we, we kind of lack that love peace right now towards one another. Tensions are high and we need to model peace. So I agree. Amen. Yeah, doubt, Pastor Dave D. Donato is house. here already <laughs> dropping some truth. Come right, on, Pastor Jay? 3D. 3D is in the house, y'all. It's good to be back. I actually have to ask Pastor Jay this. So yes. uh, All right. uh, we have uh, a lady at our church on staff whose daughter plays for Angela. And I said, is Angela that high energy all the time? She's like, yes, she is. Is that true? Yeah, I, don't know any, I don't know if there's a such thing as low, en <laughs> yeah. uh, low energy Angela, 
I don't know. You wake up like that, go to bed like that, I everything in between. I mean, no caffeine required yeah. either. If you you don't drink caffeine, do you? Well, yes, that's oh, what's in man. my right well, here. Well, look out. <laughs> Jesus and coffee. Yes. Jesus and coffee. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Well, Pastor Dave, we're excited to have yeah. you here. Yeah. Great to have and you back. I mean, we just yeah, we just got to sit down with yeah. you, and your wisdom has been so good for us and Thanks. for the body as a whole. Right now, you're helping the church to yeah. recognize how politics and belief play yeah. hand in hand. Can you share with us a little bit about that? Yeah, it's an area I've, I've always been passionate about. Um, we've been doing this at our church. Um, we did a, a whole podcast on this to help guide the church up to the voting booth. How do I process all? We're in the information age. It's overloading, right? Uh, and also a, a, focus, a focus on prayer. And my biggest thing is Christians will decide this election, period. The data says that. So. Last election, close to 40 million believers did not vote. And wow. you look at any swing state, wow. if, Christ, if just 20% of that number votes this year, we'll decide the election. So really, wow. God has put this election in our hands. If we will yeah. exercise our responsibility, I would say, our right, praise God wow. for our country. We have a responsibility to vote, that's I believe, true. according to scripture. So, so it's very wow, important then, uh, even if the 40 million go out and yeah. vote, how they vote 100%. and you've developed uh, a yeah. little guideline yeah. uh, I, i'm gonna call it the three three d's four p's I like for that. electing can i take that you can take this? that and run with it man yeah I, I i try to make it simple so for me it's four p's it begins with prayer like if we have if we only started praying for our leaders in the past month shame on us we're calling yeah. in scripture right. in first timothy 2 pray for your kings and those in governing authority so yes. we need to pray for all candidates too yes. not just your preferred candidate so are we praying and pray that God would lead you up to the voting booth. And then I have three criteria, and they are the other three Ps, which is policy, party, and person. And that's how I rank them. Now, others might rank them differently. And that talk about love and truth, that's fine. You yes. can do that. For me, policy always outlives the person. We see that historically. That person is in the seat for four years. And we are a personality-driven culture. So we're drawn to vote based off personality, right? Who I like. We have to watch that. If you look at anyone, I, recently I would say the, the Bush tax cuts, they ended in 2013. He's been out of office 13 right. years from that point. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Obama, right? Obamacare, the yeah. Affordable Care Act, that's still established and he's been out for eight years. Policies outlive the person. So you need that's to good. go dig into, and I love the guest you just had, Robert. Yes. Go look at the resources, look right. at policy. And I always say, past over what they're saying now. Yeah. History tells you what they're really gonna stand for. And what wow. policies will most, I say, advance the kingdom of God? Both candidates are fallen. Yes. But right. which of the two will most advance the kingdom of God with policy? And then I go party. Party is always bigger than person. And I say that because the party will dictate who that person surrounds himself with. The cabinet, federal judges they will appoint. And which, which of the parties will let believers, Christians, have a voice at the table? Like where can we have an influence on the nation? Yeah. So I go party next, and then you go person. You factor in the character of yeah. the person, who they are, and going back to policy, what truly do they stand for? And, and, and this, we're, it's unique, we have two candidates who do both have past political history now. Yeah. Go look what they've done in their history. More than what they're promising, yeah. history. And then I believe God's gonna give you discernment on where to go with your vote. A little pushback, yeah, 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 a little pushback, yeah. just a little bit. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I want you to explain, I'm sure yeah. you, I, I love everything you said. I love yeah. what you uh, yeah. mentioned there. Uh, you said about party ahead of person. Wouldn't yeah. person, though, drive the party more? It would seem like, because if the person gets in, they're going to surround themselves with the party. But I'm just curious on why you took that, that stance there. Yeah, because I still think uh, the candidate uh, is still driven by the bigger party, meaning the Republican Party, Democratic, Democratic Party. They're mm -hmm. going to go with their crew, right, to really get policy done. Okay. So that party okay. is truly going to influence the person more than we think. Got it. And we have dominating personalities, right? right? But at the end of the day, we've seen even the presidential candidates be swayed by the, the party during their four years. So that's why I'll often go for is that they're gonna, they're, to get things done, they're gonna have to align themselves with the party that put them there. Yeah, and yeah, that's yeah. why I always put party over person. Yeah, because yeah. they're not their own. No, no. they're not. <laughs> no. You know, it's, it's fascinating. If you go research uh, our history, I mean, our, our founders were brilliant. They made our system of government very frustrating, meaning they offset each other. It's hard to get things done. And that was purposeful yes. so to, to make you have to work together to get things done. So that's why I always think go, go party, too, even before the person. So.
for sure. I like that piece on policy. Yeah. Because that yeah. is yeah. so yeah. true. Yeah. And yeah. typically, yeah. honestly, the entire political debate comes back to, well, the guy before me did this, <laughs> but it was actually three guys before him, yeah. you know? Yeah. And so I love that piece yeah. of um, insight. Are you finding that those four uh, areas are really helping your church? They are, you know, it's, uh, it, we've gotten a lot of great feedback from, from our body that, you know, we decided so many churches, and I respect that they do, you know, they've done just straight sermon series on this. Yeah. When I was here last time, we, we kicked off the book of James. We said, we're going to continue preaching through the book of James. That's what we're doing in the pulpit. But we're not going to let the believers sit on the sidelines with no guidance and shepherding. So we went the route of our podcast and many other avenues to really encourage them. These seven days of prayer that we're doing as a church. We have seven subjects and I'm going to hit the next seven days to, to guide them. And uh, I have been encouraged at the end of the day from the response of the church. I, I do believe we're going to see more believers voting this election cycle. And my, my biggest thing is, I mentioned this when I was here last time, is we can't let it divide us. Yeah, the harvest is ripe. I actually think the work begins November 6th. We're going to have a divided nation. People are going to yeah. be hurting. Half the country is going to be hurting. Yes. And we can bring the hope of Christ right yes. back I, to that. I have great follow-up. I, I, I yeah. love that. It's going to start November 6th. Yeah. So what would be the take, all right, regardless who gets in, yeah. whether President Harris or President Trump, yeah. What, what, how do we begin that work? Yeah. Well, I kind of when I was back here last time, are we preparing the church to be ambassadors of peace and ambassadors for Christ? So in the workplace, in our schools, in our communities, people are going to be hurting. The, those who had Harris or Trump signs in their yard and that candidate did not get in, they're going to be hurting. They're going to be upset, let's be honest, where we're at in the tensions. How can you engage them? Even if you yeah. voted different than them, like, this person's engaging me? Yeah, how are you doing? You know, I know you really cared about the election. And, and bring your faith to them. Bring their yeah. faith to them. And we should already be doing that. Yes. Already. Yes. But I keep coming back to uh, Matthew 9, the harvest is ripe. And that's, that's our biggest responsibility right now as the church is, is pro proclaim Christ. Yes, Amen. it is. Amen. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> Come back here. We've got more with Pastor Dave in 60. When you give to Cornerstone Television this month, we'll send you Encouraging Words for a Discouraging World by Dr. Jeremiah. Filled with encouraging and inspiring words, Dr. Jeremiah helps you navigate the difficulties of daily life with faith, courage, and resilience. He shares practical insights and timeless wisdom from the Bible that will help you find hope, comfort, and strength even in the darkest of times. This book includes biblical examples of hope that will inspire you during challenging seasons, inspiring teachings on how to claim victory even in the hardest of times, practical wisdom for holding God's promises in your heart. Whatever hardship you're facing, encouraging words for a discouraging world will help you find perspective, hope, and a renewed sense of purpose. Request your copy today as our thank you gift when you give to CTVN. To give, call 888-665-4483 or go to ctvn.org slash donate. Well, we're back here with Pastor Dave discussing stuff around the election. And uh, yeah. uh, one of the things that I think is so important, uh, we saw in the Ask Amy segment, mm -hmm. uh, is that there's so many people that are divided in families. People won't even come to dinner. Yeah. The election is only one day yeah. out of every four years. Now, there's yeah. a lot of gearing up to it. Right. What do you say to people and how do you help people to not be so divisive over politics? Yeah, mm. uh, great question. So I often tell people, I just talked to a, a bunch this week, where how can a Christian vote for blank? Or how can, and I, and I would say a timeout, everyone has a backstory. Something could have happened in their life or their life experience yes. that led them to the point that says, I'm gonna vote for this candidate over that candidate. Yes, going back to what I just shared, policy I believe should go above that, but there's a backstory. So when you have those differences, love and truth, are you respectfully hearing them out? Are you going straight to judgment? Tell me what brought you there and just help me understand that. And we don't do that enough in the church wow. uh, at all. We don't allow our brothers and sisters to tell their story of where God brought them there. And uh, so I think we need to bring down the tone of how we talk to one another and uh, be able to have dialogue. Mm. And it's on all issues uh, yeah. that, that surrounds right now. It's, it's the presidential race. That let's tone it down and learn to seek out your, your brother and sister. You know, that, that phrase in Ephesians, truth and love. Love means you have a, a true caring interest in the person. Oftentimes when we meet with believers, we want to put them in their place. Where's that in scripture? <laughs> like, where's that in scripture? Instead, I want to genuinely have an yeah. interest in your life beyond this subject and let's have dialogue. And man, conversation, you might not land on the same spot, 
you still, you'll still walk away probably with differences in that political position, but I hope you're still united for Christ, Amen. right? And it all comes down to more than anything, it's that tone, how we approach one another. And it's always a heart issue in scripture, right? Yeah. More than just uh, where we stand on the issues, so. For sure. You know, Angela, yeah. I think about it too. It's like uh, everybody, that's a great point. The yeah. lens yeah. Yes. that we see things through. Even we're men as yes. a woman, you may even yes. see it differently than we do just coming from your background. So yes. I think it's important that we understand the lens of the individual yes. and then we can even empathize a little bit more because at the end of the day, like you said, after 100%. we vote, well, yeah. after that, let's go back to being brothers and sisters in Christ. 100%. Yeah. I mean, it's one of those things that I feel, you know, politics has politicized who we've always been. Yeah. So we've always been believers. We've always believed as Jesus has, but yeah. now there is a um, secular world that is kind of giving that a polarizing view and, yeah. and making us take a stand against another. Yeah. But it's not necessarily taking a stand against another. It's just standing for Jesus. Yeah. And he's always been compassionate and full of life. I love that discussion, Pastor D. Yeah, and I, you look in scripture, I mean, Peter and Paul had their differences. You yeah. look in scripture, my goodness, yes. like it, yeah. we're wired that way. Yes. But when we make the gospel the Come center on. of the church, then we have, a, we have a basis that will never change for our unity. Candidates yes. will change, policies will change. The country has changed big time in the last few decades. Christ never does, his word never does, the gospel never does. So when you make that the centric part of your relationship with every believer, you can have differences, but rise above them. Yes. But sometimes, we get, to, oftentimes I had someone, uh, I'll, just be, I'll just be honest, I want to call the church about, you guys need to do this or this. And I asked the person on the phone, tell me in the last three months, how many people you've shared the gospel with? Dead silence. Yeah, right. Dead right. silence. And I said, look, I'm not trying to put you in your place. I'm just saying, we're getting away from the mission. Yes. Go and make disciples, not of a candidate, of Christ. Come and I said, on. we just spent 30 minutes talking about presidential candidates. And you said in three months, you haven't even shared Jesus with someone. So let's rise above that, especially past this election and get back to our mission as the church. Yes. Do you think that's the reason why, we only got about a minute yeah. left, but do you think that's the reason why poli the devil is using politics to, to deceive us and oh. to distract us so then when November 6 hits, we're not ready? 100%, 100%. We should have been doing this all along, yeah. Yes. but yeah, it's gonna be a make or break moment for the church. Are we gonna rise up no matter what candidate is in that office and go proclaim Christ? Or are we gonna be defeated because what we were focusing on this whole time was not the right person. The person of Christ has, should have been our mission all along. So my prayer is that the church would show even a joy, a hope Amen. and a peace, even Amen. if your candidates in the office and people are like, wait a second, I know you were voting for, they're not in the office. Yeah, so what? Jesus is on the throne. Amen. And so let's march Amen. forward together for the gospel. Yeah, we have a tremendous witnessing opportunity coming starting mm. November 6th. So. Amen. Yeah. Yes, Amen. come on. <laughs> Pastor Dave, thank you so Always much pleasure, for being man. with yeah. us. Yeah, well, I love what we're you guys so blessed. Do. It's, it's awesome to be here. So thank praying you. for you guys, be praying this week. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah, we're praying for your church as thank well. Thank you, thank you. Yes, and thank you for taking the lead and the charge in these seven days leading yeah. up of prayer and yeah. focus on Jesus. Thank you. For you, get your prayer on. Make <laughs> Jesus the center of all things. Whether it's Nebuchadnezzar, King David, it doesn't matter. Sovereign God mm. reigns over all things. Keep that at your heart, your focus, and your life. We'll see you next time. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.